In this video, we're going to talk about the normal distribution and finding probabilities using the normal distribution. Let's try this with an example. Suppose weights of checked baggage of airline passengers follow a nearly normal distribution with mean 45 pounds and standard deviation 3.2 pounds. Most airlines charge a fee for baggage that weigh in excess of 50 pounds. Without calculating the exact probability, determine in which of the below ranges would the percent of airline passengers who incur this fee fall. So we know that the distribution is normal, we're given a mean and a standard deviation. Let's start by drawing our curve, that should always be the first step. Then mark our mean and the observation that we're interested in. Since we want to find the percentage of passengers that incur an excess baggage fee when they have a baggage that weighs more than 50 pounds, we want to shade the area under the curve above 50. We first want to start with finding how many standard deviations away from the mean 50 is. In other words, calculate the standard the z-score as the observation minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. In context, that's going to be 50 minus 45 divided by 3.2, which is 1.56 standard deviations above the mean. So our observation is somewhere between 1 and 2 standard deviations away from the mean. Within one standard deviation of the mean is 68% of the observations, and the percentage of observations that fall more than one standard deviation away from the mean is simply going to be 100 minus 68 divided by 2, since the curve is symmetric and we're only interested in observations higher than the mean, 16%. The shaded white area is somewhere less than 16%. But let's see if we can get a little more precise solution by finding a lower bound as well. If we venture one more standard deviation away from the mean, we're going to capture the middle 95% of the observations, and the percentage of observations that are more than two standard deviations above the mean is simply going to be 100 minus 95 divided by 2, once again because the curve is symmetric, 2.5%. So the shaded white area is somewhere between 2.5 and 16%. Here we calculated this area while we really estimated this area using the 6895 99.7 rule. But we can actually find a more precise solution. Let's draw the curve again and let's remind ourselves that this particular observation was 1.56 standard deviations above the mean. We can refer to the normal probability table, and the way the table works is that the rows tell us about the first decimal place. So here the z-score starts with 1.5, so I'm going to look at the row corresponding to 1.5, then find the column that corresponds to the second decimal place, 0.06, and at the intersection of this row and column is going to be the area under the curve below 50. I know that this is the area below 50, because the little picture on top of the normal probability table is telling me that for any z-score that we look up, it's going to give us the shaded area, in other words, the area under the curve up to that particular z-score. But this is not the area that I'm actually interested in. I actually want to find the complement of that. That's simply going to be 1 minus that um, part probability that we obtain from the normal probability table. That's 0.0594. There are two ways we can interpret this. 5.94% of passengers incur an excess baggage fee, which is what the question was asking us, or if I randomly select an airline passenger, the probability that this passenger will incur an excess baggage fee is 0.0594. So we can basically interpret these as probabilities or percentages. There are, of course, more modern solutions for finding these probabilities. One of them is using statistical software. Let's try it with R. In R, I can use the function called PNOR. The first thing that I want to specify to this function is the observation that I'm interested in. The second argument is going to be my mean of 45. And the third argument is going to be my standard deviation of 3.2 and the function is going to yield the area under the curve up to the particular observation, the point 0.9409. That's not the area that I was interested in though, I'm interested in the complement of that, so all I need to do is subtract that number from 1, and I get to a very similar solution that I obtained using the normal probability table, 0.059. Another way of doing this would be to actually specify one more argument to my function p-norm, lower dot tail equals false, meaning do not give me the lower tail area, 
and that would automatically give me the complement, the 0.059. Another option, instead of using statistical software, I can actually use a web applet designed especially for finding normal probabilities. All I need to do is this, uh, from the drop down menu, pick the normal distribution, specify my mean of 45, and specify my standard deviation of 3.2. And then I also want to give it a cutoff. I want the area to the right of 50. So the shaded right area is going to be. 0.059. So we have looked at a variety of ways for calculating normal probabilities. The first one was an estimation using the 6895.99.7 rule. A slightly more precise but perhaps a little archaic method was using the normal probability table. And then we looked at two approaches using computation. I hope that this video has been helpful for understanding how to calculate normal probabilities using the normal distribution. Thank you for listening.